Uh, let's kick things off with retail earnings, though. We did get some numbers out from Home Depot as well as Walmart. Walmart certainly b- the big one, Brian, um, given that they had warned in advance um, about uh, a hit to profit, uh, given what they've been seeing, especially on the inventory picture. But the numbers here looking good, at least uh, we're seeing the stock up about 6% here. Total revenue is up more than 8%. Some of that driven by inflation and higher prices on food and other items. We should point out the company reiterated its forecast for the second half of the year. Same store sales now expected to grow by roughly 3 percent. Adjusted earnings per share expected to decline 9 to 11 percent for the full year. Um, Brian, you know, we always look to Walmart, obviously, you know, the biggest retailer here. In terms of, uh, you know, kind of a a bellwether of, of where the consumer sentiment is, Right now, a lot of similar themes that we heard from the previous quarter, they're talking about customers coming in, trading down on items. They've also got uh, more and more customers coming in from the higher income bracket, something they pointed out there. And then, of course, inventory. I'm looking at the number there. It was up 25 percent in the quarter, which continues to be the story. They have to slash prices. They have to clear inventory ahead of the holiday season. Yeah, and I think that, you know, broadly speaking, the story is that Walmart kind of beat the street's expectations. Now, the question is whether or not the street's expectations were so low, were so low because of the um, May statement that they had where they warned that their uh, revenues might not be as hot as some had expected for this particular quarter. That was a reason why the stock, which, by the way, was about $160 a share earlier this year, ended up dropping to as low as $120. But now, hey, They beat the estimates, right? So that's why shares are back up again about 6% today. You could argue that's why they put out the warning ahead. And that's maybe one strategy that you might see other types of companies start to deploy into the next few quarters as well. But look, at the end of the day, we still have to talk about Walmart as Walmart. As you mentioned, right, the inflationary story should be good for a company that's known for its relatively lower prices. And again, Doug McMillan saying it straight up in in the statement, we're pleased to see more customers choosing Walmart during this inflationary period. Also interesting to note, they had record member counts at Sam's Club. Mm. So a lot of people still trying to buy in bulk, and obviously those membership revenues a lot stickier and probably more reliable to lean on for future Yeah, it is about being a little more price conscious and buying in bulk. The other thing I thought was interesting, the CFO saying about the trade downs that are happening, but also seeing that consumers are opting for smaller package goods and also paying more in credit card instead of debit card. And that, I think, points to sort of consumers being a little more aware about their spending, potentially maybe putting it on their card to pay it down later. You know, all these things that we sort of look to see, well, where exactly is the sentiment and is the concern for a recession real? Well, and I think that when it comes to Walmart, it's just so important to remember that this is the nation's second, I think it's the second largest or the After first Amazon. largest employer. Yeah, largest employer, Amazon and Walmart kind of trade spaces mm-hmm. there. But uh, in addition to being the largest employer, they have a really good pulse on the overall American consumer because of, as you mentioned, trends and how much they're needing to rely on debt, for example, or credit cards to finance the transactions at the stores, I'd also be interested to see any sort of data on like layaway, for example. That's Mm -hmm. not necessarily something that they had uh, on the earnings call, nor did they talk about. They only update, I think, about once a year how many employees that they employ. But at the end of the day, I think that the story for inflation will remain the same because even if, let's say, for example, the overall CPI numbers start to come down later this year, remember, prices are not going down. They're just going to go up at a slower rate. So I don't think that takes momentum out of people who have made the trade-off, for example, going to Whole Foods, right, for higher income Mm -hmm. people who have decided to go to Walmart just because inflation goes down to 6% doesn't mean that they're going to start to go back to Whole Foods again, right? Well, and this is the thing we were talking about before the show in terms of the market share gains they made in the quarter in the food category. You know, three quarters of that, according to Walmart, came from households that made $100,000 or more. And so, you know, as we were saying that, look, you know, is this sort of the trade-off that's happening? You're having Walmart customers who are already in the door trading down, but you've also got more cost-conscious customers who are saying, you know, maybe I don't necessarily need to shop at, let's say, a place like Whole Foods that has a higher price point. Maybe I'll explore Walmart to see how much cheaper it can be. Yeah, and obviously a lot of people making the switch between where they're shopping, but also remember that people who are already existing and have been loyal customers to Walmart the CFO saying on the call, customers trading down from deli meats to tuna and beans. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of that trade off happening inside their own, uh, even the lower income uh, customers as well. Something definitely worth watching. By the way, Target, we're watching uh, later this week yep. as well.